Hello and welcome! Today I'm going to very quickly walk you through how to do movement and collisions in Game Maker from scratch. So we want to create our new project, use the blank template, and then name your project. And let's go! So the very first thing we're going to want to do is create a sprite for our player. We can easily go over here to the right where we have our asset tree over here. We can right click our sprite folder, go over to create, and then go all the way down to sprite. Left click on that, and now we have a new sprite asset open. First, what we want to do is we want to name our sprite. So I'm going to call it S player for sprite player. And then without having to worry about any of this stuff, we can just go right ahead into editing the image. So let's double click down here on our first frame. Feel free to take your time to look around the image editor, but all I'm going to do is create a square for our player. So first I'm going to click this button here and enable my grid so I can see 16 by 16 pixel spaces. And then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, select a nice color and fill in one of these rectangles because all I want is a 16 by 16 size square player. Then I'm going to go up to the toolbar here to image, click on it, scroll all the way down to auto trim all frames, and this will get rid of all of my excess space around my player. And that's all I'm going to use for the sprite. So now I can close out of my sprite editor window. So now we're ready to make our actual player object. So we can go over to our object folder, right click, go to create, and now scroll down to object. And we can name this similarly to how we named our sprite. I'm going to name this O player like this for our object player. Then before we get started, we can go over here to the sprite section of our editor, click it, navigate to our sprite folder, and then select our player sprite. And now we have paired it with our object player. Now objects are what actually run code in GameMaker. So this is where we're gonna create our player's behavior. So let's add some code. We can go over here to our event window and click add an event. All these types of events you see can run code, but they each run them slightly differently and at slightly different times. So first let's add a create event. When adding your first event in GameMaker, you'll see a pop-up window asking you about your scripting preference. For this project, I'm using GML code on the left here. And to stop this window from popping up again in this project, we can go ahead and go down and tick don't ask again for this project. Then hit OK and we're ready to continue. Like its name states, a create event only runs whenever the object is first created in your game, which means it's a great place to set up variables that you want to use in your object. So let's set up the three basic variables that we're going to need for this project. So first, we want a move speed, which will determine how fast the player can go. And for default, I'm just going to set this to two. And then whenever it comes to actually moving our player, we need to have an X speed, which I'll set to zero at first. And we need a Y speed, which I'll also set to zero at first. Our X speed will control our left and right movement, and our Y speed will control our up and down movement. And the way we're going to get those two separate speeds is by using our move speed in tandem with button presses. And anytime you need to interact with an object or manipulate variables and change things during the gameplay, you need to use a new kind of event, and that is called a step event. So let's go over to add event again, go to step, we're just going to add the normal step event, and this event runs every single step of the game, or every single frame of the game. So this is where we do all of our basic interactivity. So as I said first, we need to get some button inputs. So first I'm gonna type a comment called get inputs. So first let's get our right key and we're gonna do that by saying right key equals and then we're going to use the function keyboard check to look for a key input. And then inside the function, we are going to pass in VK underscore right, which stands for virtual key right and it is a constant value linked to the right arrow key on a keyboard. So what this line of code is doing is we are asking keyboard check to look for the right arrow key, and if that right arrow key is being pressed, keyboard check is returning one, so right key equals one, and if it's not being pressed, keyboard check is returning a zero, so right key equals zero. And I'll show you how we're gonna use that information in a second. But for now, go ahead and fill out the left, up, and down key just like you did for the right key. And now that we have all those inputs, we can work on getting the X and Y speeds. We'll start with the X speed here. Fundamentally, for something to move, you can't just have a speed, but you also need a direction in which it needs to move at. So when we're talking about speed on an X axis, we need to determine if we should be moving left or right. And a very simple way to do that is to do right key minus our left key value. And I made a visual for you really quick just to show you how that makes sense. Since both keys aren't being pressed, we're getting zero minus zero equals zero, so no direction. But you can see if I press the right key, we're getting an X speed of positive one. And if I press the left key, we're getting an X speed of negative one. And if I press both, we're getting zero again. So you can see we've already solved our direction problem. And now we just have to make sure the speed is correct. And the easiest way to do that is we can group off our direction part of the equation and we can multiply it times our movement speed which now changes those negative and positive ones to a negative and positive two over here. So we can change this variable now and it will ultimately change our X speed. 
Then we do our Y speed the same exact way. However, what you might not realize is we need to start with down key minus up key as opposed to up minus down. And that's because in Game Maker, whenever you go up, you're going negative. And whenever you go down, you're going positive. And you can see if I press up on the graph over there, I'm getting an upwards direction. And if I press down, I'm getting a downwards direction. So it works the same exact way. And now all we have left to do is move the player, which is as simple as adding our X speed to our X like this and adding our Y speed to our Y position. Now our movement code should be done. So let's go and try and test it. So to do that, we just need to go over to our room folder. We can open up the room that Game Maker has kindly given us in a default project. And now we wanna add our object player to this room. So to do that, we simply need to highlight our object player on the right in our asset browser. And we also need to go over to the left and select an instance layer. The instance layer is specifically for objects. So now that we have our player and our instance layer highlighted, we can hold the Alt key and place our player somewhere. Now in my room, my player looks quite small, but all we want to do is test now. So I'm going to hold the Alt key, press the left mouse button, and now my player is in the room and I can pick it up and drag it again. And that means it's in. So very simply, we can now press the run game button up here or F5. And we have our big room with our little player and it can move around in all eight directions, no matter how I'm holding the keys. Awesome. So we've got a moving player. The only thing left we have to do is make sure that we can give it something to run into. So let's go make those walls. And to make our wall object, it's gonna be the same process as how we made our player. So you can see I'm creating another 16 by 16 pixel sprite. I'm just making it red this time for the wall. And I've created another object the same way I did before. And I'm pairing my wall sprite to that wall object. And the great news is the wall object is actually completely done. So once you're done making your wall object, then you can head back over to our player object and we can add our last couple lines of code. So the way we're gonna do the collisions is very, very simple. I'm gonna make some space in between getting my speeds and actually moving the player. And we're gonna add our collisions right here. So first let's do our X collisions, our left and right ones. So we're gonna use a function called place meeting. So we're gonna say if place meeting, and this function takes three separate inputs. So first let's do our X position. That's going to be our current X plus where we think we're going to be. So that's gonna be plus our X speed. We're gonna use our current Y position as the second input and then our final input is what we're gonna be looking for a collision with, which is the wall. Then we can run some code. So before we're actually moving, what we're gonna do is use this function to check if we were to add that speed to our current position, would we be running into a wall? And so if there is, what we wanna do is just set our X speed back to zero so our player does not move into the wall, thus basically making this a collision. It's pretty cool, I know. So now we just have to also do it for our Y speed, right? And we need to change that a little bit because we wanna check the current X position we're at, but then we want to check where we will be if we were to add our Y speed. So it's going to be X for the first input, then Y plus Y speed, and then checking for our object wall. And if there's an object wall in the way, we are going to set our Y speed to zero. And now I can just show you this working because that's all we need to do. I'm gonna go back into the room really quick, go back to my instance layer, highlight my wall object, and I wanna put some of these down. And really quick, you can just go up here to this little toolbar, do the drop down menu for grid options, and the default is gonna be 32 by 32 pixels, but we're using 16 by 16 pixel objects. So now my walls fit in the spaces. You can put down your walls and you can also drag and stretch them around if you want to. You can do whatever you like. And now I'm gonna test the game really quick. And yeah, look at that. We are colliding, we're not running into the walls and it's properly stopping us. And real quick, I'm just gonna change my room settings just so I can show it to you zoomed in a little bit and show you how to zoom your view in. Make sure once you're done, everything is still within your room limits. So you might need to drag some walls in your player around again back into the white rectangle. But anyways, here it is uh, at a slightly more appropriate size. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something cool. Take care now.